Okay, thank you very much, Collins and, and James, uh, for your presentation uh, and welcome. Um, given um, the focus, well, um, I, I should perhaps start off by noting that James talked a lot about uh, relationships and the importance of uh, relationships. I'm going to focus on government to government uh, relationships in the form of free trade agreements. Um, which are international treaties uh, containing legally bound commitments and agreed rules. Um, now, what has certainly um, impressed me over the years is you have this reflected, uh, these set of commitments and rules in an international treaty, and that's what everyone agrees are the rules of the game and, and the commitments they're bound to. But they're also, it gives you a framework for engaging with other countries. So there are issues and things that are not actually written down in a treaty, but you discuss. Um, and it gives you a mechanism through the institutional arrangements you establish through the free trade agreements and the negotiation of them, then their implementation, that gives you a forum for engaging with other countries and to discuss issues of interest and concern. So there are actually things not written down that you also address and cover. It gives you another framework uh, and another avenue to uh, pursue your interests. But just given the focus of today's program on Southeast Asia, my um, uh, presentation will cover briefly six key areas. Firstly, to provide an overview of ASEAN's and Australia's participation in regional economic architecture as context for our trading relationships and FTA agenda in the Southeast Asian region. Second, uh, secondly, to briefly outline the existing Australian FTAs before focusing on two in particular, uh, the ASEAN Australia New Zealand FTA, ANSPTA, and then the Malaysia Australia FTA, NAFTA. Um, in the final part of my presentation, I would like to address our recent FTA negotiations involving uh, Southeast Asian countries, the uh, Indonesia-Australia Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement negotiations, and finally our uh, current regional FTA negotiations, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, uh, and also the Trans-Pacific Partnership negotiations. This is um, a Venn diagram. Some people like it, others don't. Uh, I find it useful. Uh, but before getting into it, I've just observed that since the late 1990s, there has been an increasing regional trend towards the negotiation of free trade agreements. This trend has been particularly marked in East Asia, sometimes described as the new Asia-Pacific regionalism. Characteristics include New countries becoming involved in FTAs, for example, China, Japan, the Republic of Korea. Countries negotiating many agreements simultaneously. Countries making agreements with others that are not close neighbours. And an increasingly broader FTA agenda beyond goods. This um, Venn diagram uses a series of overlapping and intersecting circles to demonstrate the relationships and overlapping memberships of the various East Asian and Asia Pacific regional groupings. The diagram seeks to illustrate the context for Australia's trade engagement in the region. It does not show Australia's bilateral FTAs. But let me take you briefly through it from left to right. Firstly, ASEAN. The Association of Southeast Asian Nations was established in 1967 to accelerate economic growth and social progress in Southeast Asia and to promote regional peace and stability. The 10 ASEAN member states, James has already detailed, and they're shown there in the circle, the ASEAN circle. Second, ANSFTA, that shows you the agreement establishing the ASEAN Australia New Zealand Free Trade Area, uh, comprising the 10 ASEAN member states, Australia and New Zealand. Third, 
you move up to the ASEAN Plus Three. And that's a forum that functions as a coordinator of cooperation between ASEAN and China, Japan, and the Republic of Korea. Fourth, ASEP, uh, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Negotiations, which involve the 10 ASEAN member states and ASEAN 6 FTA partners. ASEAN has FTAs with China, Japan, Korea, India, and Australia and New Zealand. So all those countries are now participating in ASEAN negotiations. We note also East Asia Summit is a regional leaders forum for strategic dialogue and cooperation on key challenges facing the East Asian region. Membership of the EAS comprises the ASEAN countries plus the United States and Russia. US and Russia do not have an FTA with ASEAN at the moment. However, the US is involved in the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement negotiations, which is seeking to build on the so-called P4 Agreement between Brunei, Chile, New Zealand, and Singapore, which entered into force in 2006. TPP negotiations now include uh, the original P4 parties and seven other countries. I suggest I stop there uh, for our current purposes, but apart from just noting that you've, um, the Venn diagram also shows APEC, PESA Plus involving the Pacific Islands, and um, it also shows those regional countries who are members of the G20. Very briefly, in looking at uh, Australia's um, existing FTAs, just to note that we've concluded seven FTAs to date, six bilateral and one regional. Four of the seven FTAs cover Southeast Asian countries, the three bilateral FTAs, Singapore, which entered into force in July 2003, Thailand entered into force on 1 January 2005, and as James has already noted, Malaysia entered into force on 1 January this year, and in the regional ASEAN Australia, New Zealand FTA, which entered into force on 1 January 2010. The um, 13 countries covered uh, by our seven included FTAs collectively accounted for 27% of Australia's total two-way trade in goods and services in 2011-12. New Zealand, 3.5%, United States, 9%, Chile, 0.3%, and ASEAN, 14%. Next now, just very briefly, at answer. This was signed on 27 February 2009 and entered into force for eight of the 12 signatories on 1 January 2010, including Australia and Malaysia. Thailand became a party in March 2010, Cambodia and Laos in January 2011, and then from 10 January last year, all 12 signatories were party when Indonesia became a party to the agreement. ANSFDA is the largest FTA that Australia has concluded and the most comprehensive FTA concluded by ASEAN. It, does, it covers goods, services, investment, intellectual property, e-commerce, temporary movement of business people, competition and economic cooperation. Um, it is most substantial in goods, reflecting the fact that ASEAN has done more internal integration on goods than in the non-goods areas. It contains a substantial tariff outcome. The deal will provide tariff-free treatment on 96% of Australia's current exports to ASEAN nations by 2020. Prior to ANSFDA's entry into force, 67% of Australia's exports to the region were tariff free. The agreement provides a strong framework to strengthen uh, services and investment outcomes over time. It also contains some com useful commitments on trade related areas such as intellectual property, and economic cooperation to promote technical assistance and capacity building 
to assist developing ASEAN countries in implementation. ANSPITER was the first time that Australia included economic cooperation in a trade agreement in, implemented through the ANSPITER Economic Cooperation Support Program. The agreement is forward-looking uh, with substantial built-in agendas and review mechanisms in areas such as non-tariff measures, rules of origin, services and investment, which are aimed at having ANSPITER's commitments expand and deepen over time with development of an ASEAN economic community. As James noted earlier, it's important, I think, to view ANSPITER as a platform for Australia's ongoing economic engagement with other ASEAN members, and it also provides a benchmark for both bilateral FTAs with individual ASEAN countries and broader ASEAN-centred uh, regional developments like the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. This graph um, just illustrates um, the, uh, the tariff commitments by Australia, uh, Indonesia and Malaysia under ANSPITER. Um, I've just selected those countries because well, we're in Australia, we're Australians here. Uh, and Indonesia and Malaysia, because these two destinations do figure prominently in the Victorian government's uh, Southeast Asia Super Trade Mission. So just to get a sense of what is legally bound under the agreement by way of tariff commitments. 2005, what well, that reflects basically WTO uh, commitments under the World Trade Organization agreement. So in the case of Australia, about 47.6% of our tariffs were bound at zero. Uh, in 2005, we committed on entry in force of ANSWER to go to 96.4% and then eventually 100% by 2020. Indonesia, 2005, uh, bound rate about 21% of its tariffs are bound at zero. Under ANSWER, uh, this year, it's 1 January, 85% of Indonesia's tariffs um, are zero. That's why it's so significant having Indonesia become a party last year and then increasing to 93.2% by 2025. Malaysia, under ANSPITER, uh, around 67% bound at zero uh, in 2010 and increasing to 96% by 2020. MAFTA. This agreement was signed to May last year in Kuala Lumpur and came into force on 1 January this year. This bilateral FTA improves upon Australian and Malaysian commitments made in ANSWETA. Upon entry into force of MAFTA this year, Australia eliminated all tariffs on goods imported from Malaysia. That is 100% tariff elimination from 1 January 2013 compared with our commitments under ANSWETA of uh, complete tariff elimination on 1 January 2020. So we brought that forward in the bilateral. Malaysia, under MAFTA, bound tariff-free access on 97.6% of recent Malaysian goods. Imports from Australia from entry into force, which will increase to 98.9% in 2016 and 99% in 2017. Key outcomes are detailed in fact sheets available on the DBAC website. And I just, um, I won't go into it now given the time constraint. Um, but I would note that in respect of services, uh, as James noted, Malaysia has committed to giving Australian entities the right to acquire majority ownership in companies supplying services in Malaysia. Not all services sectors, but in very discrete areas. Um, for example, 70% ownership in higher education services increasing up to 100% in 2015, 70% ownership in direct insurance services, 70% ownership in telecommunication network services and facility providers. Malaysia also, uh, sorry, MAFTA also includes measures which assist Australian companies doing business in Malaysia including business-friendly rules of origin provisions. Australian exporters do, uh, do 
do not need to supply a certificate of origin, but rather a simpler declaration of origin. More Australian business executives and senior managers are permitted to work in Malaysia and to stay for longer periods. Easier access to visas for spouses and dependents of Australians working in Malaysia. Establishment of a framework for mutual recognition of qualifications and licensing for professionals and stronger protection of Australian trademarks and copyright. So, MAFTA is delivering for Australian businesses and will help Australian businesses looking to expand their presence in Asia. To mention Indonesia now, the first round of formal negotiations uh, opened in Jakarta in late September last year and concluded last month. The negotiating teams finalised guiding principles for the negotiations and agreed a forward work program to the end of next year. And the second round has been scheduled to be held in Australia in June or July. In 2011-12, Indonesia was Australia's 12th largest two-way trading partner, accounting for 2.4% of Australia's total trade. And there's a lot of strong political um, leadership provided in wanting to take this, uh, uh, these negotiations to a successful uh, conclusion. It really, the negotiations cover uh, trade, investment and economic cooperation issues which are aimed at building a higher level and more mutually beneficial economic partnership between Indonesia and Australia. The economic cooperation pillar sets this IA sever apart from any uh, other trade agreement that either country has negotiated. The negotiations build on the ANSFTA, which was the first trade agreement in which Australia included an economic cooperation chapter and a separate economic cooperation work program. I should also note a new development in our FTA experience has been the Indonesia-Australia Business Partnership Group on the bilateral trade and investment relationship, which was um, the group comprising the two chambers of commerce in both countries, the Australian Chamber of Commerce and Industry and the Indonesian counterpart Kadim as well as the two bilateral business councils got together and submitted a joint position paper to both governments for their consideration. Uh, and this is the first time in Australia's experience that our industry groups have worked with their counterparts in, in our negotiating partner to submit a joint report for both governments to consider. And the IA, sorry, a lot of acronyms, the Indonesia-Australia Business Partnership Group position paper puts forward a set of 53 recommendations, many of which are ambitious for the governments to consider. And both the Australian and Indonesian governments are still working their way through the report to consider how we could address some of the issues raised. And we're keen to engage further with the Business Partnership Group as well as other stakeholders, including the Victorian state government, um, on how we can progress <coughs> our negotiations. Finally, let me address current regional FTA negotiations. Um, Australia and Malaysia are both involved in the RCEP and the TPP negotiations. Indonesia is involved in RCEP but is not involved in TPP. Um, RCEP is an ASEAN-centred approach to a regional free trade area which seeks to build on the existing FTAs that ASEAN has concluded uh, with its um, uh, countries in the region. These negotiations were launched by leaders last November and uh, associated with that launch were a set of agreed guiding principles and objectives endorsed by the leaders. Um, the first round will commence in May 2013 and the aim is to complete the negotiations by the end of 2015. Um, the TPP uh, represents uh, another strategic opportunity to shape emerging uh, regional economic architecture and increasing migration and liberalisation of the Asia-Pacific region. 
um, with the US involved. Um, in addition to the current 11 TPP negotiating countries on 15 uh, March uh, last month, uh, Japan's Prime Minister Abe, Abe announced that Japan would seek TPP membership. So that's currently under consideration. And um, TPP has been going for a while, uh, uh, since 2010. Uh, they they negotiations commenced in March 2010, and um, uh, there have been 16 rounds to date. Final point I'd just like to conclude on is to note three things. One, that we have a full FTA agenda in Southeast Asia. Uh, the existing FTAs are there uh, for people uh, to utilise. Um, and our ongoing negotiations have potential to present further opportunities for Australian business in future, seeking to expand operations in the region. And uh, full further information is available on the uh, uh, DFAT website. I should also note that after we conclude our session this morning, uh, I'm, I'll be here for a, a while. If anyone has uh, other questions or issues they wish to discuss, I'm available. Um, so please um, grab me before I leave. Uh, thanks very much.